guys just went to another gear in the fourth. Uh, just speak to what you guys were able to do in the fourth quarter. Um, just pick it up, get stops, um, not take the ball out the net every possession. I think that's what bogged us down in the first half. Uh, they kept scoring and we couldn't get out and, and play our type of basketball. Um, we just picked up the defense intensity. Um, just made it tough on them. Now, obviously there was frustration throughout the first three quarters. How were you guys able to sort of channel that and not allow it to affect what you guys did in the fourth? Yeah, I mean, it's not frustration. We've, we've been here before. We've been in these situations. You know, we understand how this game of basketball works. You know, it's not always going to go your way, especially at this point of the season. Um, but finding ways to, you know, overcome that, the, the missed shots and, you know, the defensive breakdowns and, you know, don't let it linger, you know, just nip it in the bud and, you know, do what we have to do. And lastly, uh, with Chris, uh, no, you've seen it. Again, I, I keep repeating myself on this, but uh, when he switches that into that mode that you talked about, he gets into, what's it like uh, to be part of that with him? Um, I mean, especially in the fourth quarter, I was a spectator. I got to watch it from the bench. And it's, I mean, you guys tell me you're watching the same thing, man. It's, it, you know, impresses us every time we see it, but it doesn't surprise us. Um, I mean, it's just the will to win. You know, he sees the matchup he likes. And I mean, you could hear their bench yelling them, send them left. You can you can try whatever you want to do, but you know, he has a he has a re rebuttal move for you at, at every time. And you know, not only is he can score, he can make a play for somebody else if you leave your man. So tough matchup. Look, in, in the second half, especially, you guys put Doncic in a lot of actions. How important is it for you guys to make sure he's expending some energy on that end as well? Uh, it's very important. You know, I think they're trying to go at matchups they like, and, you know, we're doing the same thing on the other end. So, you know, tough matchup to guard, but, you know, he, he's going to have to guard a bit. How'd that trio of threes feel? Did the crowd get louder every time you felt like? Yeah. Yeah, I like the fourth quarter today. Um, definitely got louder than, say, the previous game. Um, but they're bringing it, man. The energy's in the house. The energy's around the city. You know, I think everybody is on this revenge tour with us, and, you know, it's fun to be a part of it. Book with DA and JaVale dealing with foul trouble there. How big was it for Busy to come in and have the energy that he did? I mean, Busy's another one, man. He's a true professional. Um, he's always ready to go. Um, he has a pretty sick routine before the game. I'm watching him, and, you know, he's always laser-focused, and, um, you know, I just love being on the court with him. You know, he does all the things that aren't going to show up in the stat sheet, um, rotations, talking, blocking shots, um, setting one of the best screens in the NBA. Um, so I enjoy being on the court with Busy. Well, you guys are outscored by 10 in the fourth in game one, and tonight outscored them by 14 in the fourth. How much was that on your mind, the way you guys finished game one over the last couple of days? And when that moment came, did that contribute at all to it, that the fact that there was something you want to make up for the way you closed out game one? Um, I wouldn't say that. You know, I, I didn't even know they beat us by 10 in the fourth quarter last game. I know they had a late push, but, you know, we, we've been a great fourth quarter team this whole season and pride ourselves in, you know, not valuing that quarter more than the other ones, but, you know, locking in and understanding it, it's time to win. Um, and, you know, we've done a good job of, you know, having a lead at the end of the third quarter and finishing teams off this year. And, you know, tonight was another example of it. This is the uh, second year in a row now, Strug not struggling, but playing really, having to play a really tough team in the first round that has matchup issues with you. And then coming into the second round just seems like it's, it's much clearer sailing. What is it about? Did, does the first round get you guys locked in for the second round? Do you feel that at all? I would just say the playoffs in general is, uh, you know, about matchups. Um, you know, I don't think the seeding is is always correct in terms of, you know, just different matchups. Like you're playing against different players. Maybe one team matches up better with another team. Um, you know, so so it's hard to say. But you know, we're only two games in. We haven't we haven't done anything yet. Look, uh, I'll answer the question for you. Personally, it's a hell of a lot of fun to watch. Mm -hmm. How much fun is it to play it? <laughs> to play with, with, with Chris or the games? The game. Oh, yeah. come on, man. This is this is all I play for. Um, 
and just getting another dose of it. You know, I missed it. And I don't want to say we turn it on in the playoffs, but it's definitely a different energy. You know, you can feel it from shoot around on to the game and, you know, the energy of the fans, they feel it also. So, you know, it's, it's been fun. Well, you found yourself uh, in that sort of familiar position now after a jump shot where you're lying down and kind of looking up. Um, are you conscious that that's happened a couple times now? Are you kind of? Yeah, I just think that's like my body movements. I don't know why, why, why it keeps happening, but I, I did think about it today. I was like, this is the pose that they take a picture of. But it just happens, man. I fall and just wait on my teammates to pick me up. Look, with the way the second quarter went, all the offensive fouls called on you guys, the, you know, sort of the anxiety of that, not and them taking the lead. Did you think at halftime I got to come out early in second half and get something going? Is that a conscious effort or is that just – did that just happen? Uh, it just happens. You know, we play best available offense. Um, the thing for us in halftime was we needed to get stops. You know, I don't think we can ever play our type of basketball if we're taking the ball out the net every time. You know, I like it when we're defending, you know, getting rebounds, securing it, and getting out. And you know, I think we have so many creators and so many talented people on this team where with, with, with him running the show, we space off of him, and, you know, he's going to make the right play, and that's when the action starts. Uh, Book, talk about what it's like playing with a 37-year-old to be on uh, yeah. Friday. Uh, to be. To be. And uh, to see what he's doing at this age. I mean, like I said earlier, man, it, it, it's super impressive, but doesn't surprise me. Um, so I've been watching it since I was seven or eight or two years old. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> nah. But, you know, just more than what he's doing on the court, just watching, you know, how he carries himself and just being a sponge to that, you know, seeing his routine, how he takes care of his body, you know, how his diet, um, his strength and conditioning, you know. I mean, he can tell you better than I can, but he – He's feeling younger by the day, um, and it's fun to be a part of. Jay created a lot of – you had the hot hand in the first half of you guys and was the leading scorer, but it seemed like he had a lot of – created a lot of second-chance opportunities, which were kind of struggled last series against the Pelicans. So can you talk about how his dribble penetration and second-chance opportunities he created opened you up and also for Chris in that you know, third and fourth quarter? Yeah, I mean, that's what I was speaking of earlier when you talked about second round versus first. Like, it's just a, you know, it's a matchup difference. You know, they don't have the Larry Nances and the Valentinus crashing, cra crashing the glass every time. And, you know, that's something that we pride ourselves on last year, just getting extra possessions. Um, we're one of the most efficient teams in, in the NBA. So if we get more possessions, I think it puts us in, you know, the best possible place to win. Chris, for you, just that fourth quarter where, you know, they they made a, you know, your lead is six, and then all of a sudden you start hitting shots. How much of that is just, okay, this is what I have to do, and how much of it is you read the game through three quarters, and now you do what you can do in the fourth? Like I always say, just playing the game. You know what I mean? Uh, book to start that third quarter, you know, got us going. You know, I just – I read the game, and – other guys on the team made big shots, you know, whenever they made a run or just to get us going, to get us warmed up into the game. And so uh, just feeding off of that. You, at one point, I think you hit a shot and then you'd be given the timeout signal looking over like, okay. And then they call a timeout. So, or you just take us to that place mentally where you are when you're in that type of. Probably, of probably just into the game. You know what I mean? It's, it ain't like texts need to be called or whatnot like that. But when you're in the playoffs, both teams at it, you know, getting into it, saying stuff, whatever. It's just – it's all in the game. Uh, Book, obviously, Chris showed tonight what he can do as a scorer uh, his entire career. He's – you know, his nickname is the point guard, right? His reputation is what he can do as a point guard. You, as someone who, you know, can also fill it up, what impresses you the most about Chris as a scorer? Score to score, what do you like the most about his game? Mm. Um, just, just the way he manipulates it, honestly. I remember growing up, I want to take it back to when I was five years old again, but <laughs> me and my dad watching him play, and he was like, you see how he makes sure everybody's involved, and then he picks his times when he's going to take over the game. And I've just always admired, you know, the way, the way he does that. Um, he's just in control at all times. You know, he's two, three steps ahead of 
whatever the other team's doing. Um, and just the leadership, you know, that can never go unnoticed when you're talking about this, man. And just the way he holds people accountable, um, the will to win. Um, I mean, the, the list keeps going on and on. You know, that's why he has the nickname he does. Chris, when you're playing a, a guy like Luka Doncic, and how important is it to make him work defensively as far as running him through a lot of actions, especially late in the game when he's logged heavy minutes like that? Um. Uh, we just try to play, um, take what the defense gives us. Mm-hmm. All series, just we got two games. We're just gonna keep playing. Chris, uh, late in, in Kobe's career, he said something along the lines of like, "If I could just be a closer like Mariano Rivera and, and come in, like he would relish that role." Uh, do you get amped to have? The, the fourth quarter stage and the consequences and, and all of the things that go into winning time. Um, what does, what about that appeals to you as a player? It's fun. Uh, I love it, especially on the road. <laughs> you know what I mean? And what's even better is having a guy like this on your team too. You know, the guy that when you're down two and they're not afraid to shoot the three, you know what I mean? So uh, we're just in the locker room talking about it as a team, you know, the, the end of games is, it's exciting for the fans and as players, I think you just always got to lean on the work, the work. You know what I mean? It all goes back to the work. You can't cheat the game, right? You got to do your strength and conditioning. You got to lift. You got to get your rest. You got to get your shots up and all that. And when you do that, you live with the results. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you live with the results. And I think the fact that we see each other day in and day out like that, putting the work in, we trust it. Just to, just to follow that up, <clears throat> Devin hit the three threes. Chris, what was it like to not only see that, but see the crowd pretty much get louder and louder? I love it. I, just, I kept watching. You know, I kept seeing him sort of back, and he coming off left, right, whatever. I mean, I didn't play with a lot of great shooters in my career, but nobody, you know what I mean, like that. You know what I mean? So I'm the guy who, when he shoots, I think is going in every time. I'll be pissed when he missed. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. <laughs>